Christmas Sunday, right? We see a lot of red in here, and certainly the holiday spirit is filling the room. Okay, and for everyone who's joining us on TV, we're glad you are with us, and we invite you to join us. We're here every Sunday, 401 East Arrowwood at 1030 to celebrate the presence of God. So let us begin our time together today with our statement of faith, and you'll find that on the screen or in your program. And we'll take that together. Together. There is one presence and one power in my life and in the universe. God the good, omnipotent. And let's take that within. Take a few moments and turn within. Settle into this time that we've come together this morning. And feel that joy in our heart, that love, that peace that is within us, that is the Spirit of God, our very nature. So in this time of year, we always feel that as a loving, living, moving, giving presence. It comes alive in us. We remember who we are. So as we feel that today, we know it's the truth of our being, and we're aware that all people in the world are waking up to this truth in their own way, in their own time. So we thank you, God, for all of our blessings. You are the love within us and all around us that connects us together. So we let you be in charge of all we say and all we do, and we do that in our time together this morning, in our own lives and in the life of Unity of Charlotte. And so it is. Amen. Then let's join together in our mission statement. Remember what we are here to do and what we have been called and the way we've been called to serve, and we'll take that together. We are a vibrant community dedicated to celebrating spiritual freedom and sharing abundant joy through love, prayer, and service. Welcome home. So we're going to sing again. Oh, Mary's 
silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angels chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. stuffed animal that you have just know that the love within you is being transmitted into that stuffed animal and it will be transmitted from that animal to the child or person that receives it for we know from quantum physics that nothing is created nor destroyed. It is just changed. And we know that our love is strengthened as we pass it to that which we are hugging. And that strength and love will go with it and be bestowed on the person that needs it. Just as we know that our right thinking and our prayers go out to the leaders in this church, in this city, in these states, throughout the world, for we truly are one. We are connected. And we acknowledge this as we say that universal prayer. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen and amen. Horace Bush will now give us the daily word. As always, I feel very honored to be in this, in this space, in this sacred moment right now, sharing with all of you, our family, what the daily word has to say and the affirmation is, I express pure joy from the inside out. Let's repeat that. 
I express pure joy from the inside out. Joy begins in the depths of my soul, radiates through my heart, and shines out to the world. Although the events of this season may bring pleasure, the deepest joy comes when I connect to my Christ nature. When my heart, mind, and soul are aligned with the indwelling spirit, I am naturally curious and excited about everything and everyone I meet. I am enthusiastic about my life and eager to do all that is mine to do. I experience a contagious bliss and ease as I connect to my inner wellspring of gladness. The joy of spirit in me is effort, effervescent. It sparkles through my eyes and adds a bounce to my step. Today I rejoice as God's jubilation bursts forth from within me. The scripture today is taken from John 15 and 11. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So that's our daily word for today. And I am Horace, your chaplain for today. So if you desire any prayer for any reason, for celebration, for comfort, for assurance, or you're just happy to see me, you just come <laughs> to the prayer room right across from Cafe Unity, and I will be more than happy to pray with you. Thank you. Gifts we bring, pa ra pa pum pum, ra pa pum pum, ra pa pum pum. Come, he told me, pa ra pa pum pum. Can it be? On this one came to see, pa ra pa pum pum. Our finest gifts we bring, pa ra pa pum pum. To lay before the king, pa ra pa pum pum, ra pa pum pum, ra pa pum pum. So to honor him, pa ra pa pum pum, when we come, every child must be made aware. Every child must be led to care. Care enough for his fellow man To give all the love that he can I pray my baby, pa pa pum 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 will come true I stood oh, beside child. him there, pa pa pum 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 I played the my day. drum for him, pa pa pum 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 I played my best for him, pa ra pa pum pum, ra pa pum pum, ra pa pum pum. And he smiled at me, pa ra pa pum pum, me and my drum. Let it be.
Good morning. morning. And happy holidays to all of you. Well, I'm going to start out with a little joke. These are always chancy to do a joke. (laughs) But to connect and laughter would be great, so laugh anyway and humor me. So in a small southern town, there was a nativity scene that showed great skill and talent. And a lot had gone into creating it. One small feature bothered me. Three wise men were wearing firemen's helmets. (laughs) Totally unable to come up with a reason or explanation, I left. I stopped by a little quick stop on the edge of town. I asked the lady behind the counter about the helmets. And she exploded into rage, yelling at me, you Yankees never do read the Bible. (laughs) I assured her I did, but simply couldn't recall anything about firemen in the Bible. She jerked the Bible from behind the counter, ruffled through some pages, finally jabbed her finger at the passage and sticking it in my face said, see, it says right here, three wise men came from afar. I think that's what we used to say in Oklahoma. <laughs> got the Holy Ghost on far. <laughs> Something like that. All right. Well, I'm going to talk on an esoterical interpretation of the Christmas story. I do not mean in any way to step on anyone's toes and your beliefs uh, surrounding these times. But we are a esoterical or a metaphysical church, and we sometimes have to look behind all of the things that divide us, which is dogma and history. And uh, I know we're just not sure sometimes what really happened. So we're going to look at it from a little different point of view today. It's a beautiful story. It's a wonderful story, but it's being worked on and has been worked on for the last 2,000 years. So what is esoterical? Esoteric, intended for likely... uh, Intended for, likely to, see, likely to be understood by any person interested in searching for inner knowledge. So I kind of say, if I have to be into the Christian arena, I'm an esoterical Christian. I like that. I can handle that better than I can the more traditional idea. Because I've always wanted to know what's behind it. What's behind the story? What's behind the letter? What's behind the story? So I was kind of born with that that idea. But I think whatever really happened is not near as important as is today looking at the energy of the story rather than the facts. The true story is not the same story that most teach in church dogma today. Jesus reinterpreted by church leaders to agree with then current dogma And what is the true story of the birth of Jesus? It's really, if you study it, different from a lot of the traditional story. The the differences do not in any way uh, detract or lessen from the impact of the story. It may provide answers to questions about religious ideas that maybe some of us have. So the story actually begins in the book of Matthew in the first chapter. Uh, in which we find Jesus' birth. And when his uh, mother Mary had been promised in marriage to Joseph, they came together and found her to be with child by the Holy Spirit. That is the story that is written pretty clearly in the Bible. When it comes to the interpretation of the New Testament, Now, I'm Minister of Education here, so I'm always trying to educate you just a little bit. Uh, Actually comes from a prophetic utterance uh, of an Old Testament prophecy that is actually given in Isaiah 7, 14. It says, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a young woman who is unmarried and a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. It is from that, from that particular prophecy that we have the story in the New Testament. The problem is the New Testament 
was never originally in the Greek language. It was never in the Greek language. Uh, many believe it was more Aramaic or with Hebrew loan words within it. So I want to look at the word virgin for just a moment and see what actually it means. The word that is used in the Hebrew is the, uh, the word Bethula, which is a word that means a young woman, a maiden, a woman of marriage age. It is not the Hebrew word that means a woman who has not had sexual encounter with another man. That is a completely different word, and that is the word that is trying to be translated over into the Greek language. When they translated it over into the Greek language, they actually made it a different word completely, which is basically the word that is prototikos, uh, uh, which means a virgin as we know a virgin. So in other words, the translation did not get translated properly to mean just a young woman. So it questions the fact whether a virgin is a woman who has never had an encounter, a sexual encounter, or does it just mean a young maiden or a young woman? So I'm saying that to say, really, when it comes to studying all this stuff, who knows? It could be any of these things. But what does it mean to us? That is the question. As spiritual people, we want only those things that are helping us to understand our walk, our path, our experiences, and how we grow, and how that we become all that we were basically created to be. The fact that Jesus, and most likely, I don't mean to put a, a, a balloon in your bubble here, but most likely he never heard his name as Jesus in the first place. Mm -hmm. That later comes in the translations into the Greek language, most likely he would have heard his name as Yeshua uh, would be the proper name that would have been used in his time. And it was a word that uh, was interesting because when a son was born to a Hebrew family, the first son took on the name of the father. And that's interesting that Jesus, Yeshua, did not take on the name of Joseph. And what does that mean kind of to us on a metaphysical level. It basically means that Jesus represents a break in the way in which things had been passed down. He rep represented a new step forward, a new way to become a human at a different level, to take on a different name. Back in those days meant to be renatured. Name and nature were synonymous. In the West, we just name our kids cute little names that we like. But in the West, they thought about names. They waited to be inspired by names. Because that name that you call someone begins to nature them and develop a character in them. Such as Saul became Paul. And such as Jacob became the supplanter. They all had uh, the calling of their life in their name. So that's an interesting thing. That as we name things, we are naturing and helping to create a particular uh, uh, nature or character with, within that person. So, the myth of the virgin birth is a metaphor for the birth of a new consciousness into the world. Again, so many out there who are traditional believe that Christ is Jesus' last name. Mr. Christ. <laughs> they didn't have last names. Jesus was the Christ. Jesus brought in something that is unique to offer the world. To offer the world. And that was the next step in our evolution. Our conscious evolution. If we take that into ourselves and understand that Jesus is sort of a way shower, a teacher who helps us to learn more about not only who we are, but who we, we can become. Sometimes I don't think it's about ascending first, but it's about becoming. Becoming who 
and what we were created basically uh, to be. So, Jesus most likely was not even born on this day at all. He was probably born around April. So, I'm just telling you, if all of this is not what they said it is, then what is it going to mean to all of, all of us? So, he's born in a stable, they say, in a manger. I find this interesting that metaphysically or esoterically this means that whoever Jesus was, Yeshua, he, that he wanted to be around earth energy, the animals, the earth, close to Mother Earth. I think that's wonderful to think of something that we call divine that holds the incarnation of the divine was not born into the high places but was born into the earth because he knew that he came to serve the earth and to serve the earth energies and to be. What a great step that is and for all of us to understand that no matter how high we get in knowledge and information and how much we raise our consciousness and all the books that we read, we never should lose our connection with earth energies. And I appreciate those that do have that here. Those of you who care for the animals and you, what, what's been done in this community by many of you who have a desire and a passion to be connected to the earth, that we not become so heavenly minded we're no earthly good whatsoever. <laughs> I think that's an important uh, issue. I think the fact that it talks about kings and wise men coming and bowing down to this tells us of an old epic, an old age that is bowing down to something new that is coming in. So really what Jesus represents to me inwardly is a new prototype for what human beings can become. That we can become more than we believe that we are. That we can tap into our own potentials and raise our own vibratory frequencies to become not only people who know that we are the spark and the divine expression of God in the earth, but also a people of service. Uh, a son is no greater than the servant. To be a son or a daughter of God is to be of service to God. And this is one thing I'm proud about in this community that has been instilled within this community is that of service that has come to each and every one of us. So, what does Mary represent to me inwardly as I take it in to an esoterical idea? First, it represents the feminine, the feminine, the importance of the feminine energy to bring in something new. How can anything be born without the feminine? <laughs> there would be nothing born. The fact that they make God the he, only the he, and so many, I wonder how God even got there without a woman. <laughs> so there must have been a feminine somewhere that it brought forth a he. There'd be no he's without she. <laughs> so what does Mary represent? Mary represents something that I refer to in sacred geometry. Now I know some of you may not be accustomed to that, but everybody pretty well knows nowadays that everything can be reduced down to mathematics in the universe. Mm -hmm. And those mathematics are um, uh, numbers that can be used to give us coded information and messages about our universe, about our planet, about ourselves. And one of the great uh, of those <coughs> symbols is something called the Visica Pisces. There it is. It's a simple thing. It is actually two circles going through the center of each other, creating this middle piece that you see over here on a lot of bumper stickers around town. Yeah? Which represents to them Jesus, the fish, the Pisces. But in spiritual and metaphysical and in quantum understanding, we understand that everything is multidimensional and is more vertical than linear. So you have this whole idea of the cross as people follow a linear path to those who find the vertical. Uh, part of it. 
If we go into the vertical and turn it up vertical, we see that it resembles the womb of the woman. The place where physical life comes from is from the womb of the woman. So Mary represents a portal, a feminine portal, uh, a symbol in which the Christ was able to come into the planet and Christ being universal. Now, as you all know, I give honor to other teachers. I've taught Buddhas here. I've taught many others. I recognize all the great teachers. But the uniqueness of what Jesus Yeshua brought in was not so much of a cultural idea or a religion or a school of thought, but it was something that was universal. And that's what we call Christ consciousness. Christ consciousness is that that connects everybody into a spiritual energetic matrix that we're all connected into. So as Christ comes in, and this man Jesus now who's born, and here's the thing about him that's the most different and what, and what he represents. He represents you being reborn at a point in consciousness in which you're ready to move from the law of karma. Hmm. We are not stuck on the wheel of karma. That's the good news that I have for you that will receive it. We're not stuck on the wheel of karma. We do not have to keep coming back and working out what we did wrong the last time. <laughs> if we keep doing that, we're never going to help the planet. We need some people to step up and say, all right, I'm out of the karmic business and I'm into co-creative partnership with the earth to help her evolve and all of her inhabitants. That's what we're looking for. These are the first fruits of the harvest. These are the esoteric ones who are searching for their inner purpose or their inner, inner, inner truth. So the thing about Jesus is he represents a man who came in or an idea that came into your mind of no karma. Now, in my study... From a biblical point of view, Jesus was so wise that he understood it would take about two days for people to get this. But a day is as a thousand years. <laughs> so we're only two days from the time that he walked this earth. So he says, for two days, I'm going to let you do miracles and signs. But on the third day, I'm going to raise you up. Guess what? We're in the 21st century. Two plus one is a three. We have entered into the third day. This is the day that we're going to be raised up out of the influence of old traditions and dogmas that has made the inherent word of God within us of no effect. Yes. That is the release of all this new information and all this new uh, uh, wonderful things that we're reading in books and hearing about today is because there's been a great release of deep, deep information that has been uh, only held within us until this time has arrived. And it's a time in consciousness. I love something in A Course of Miracles that says it so beautifully. Jesus says, according to The Course of Miracles, one moment of grace burns all karma. Mm. Hello. One moment of grace burns all karma. So if we could move today and consider to move out of the ring of action and reaction, you see, you see that that's been a blessing for a time, but sometimes what, what is uh, blessed by the ego in the beginning betrays us later. And that's what we're doing because we're seeing war escalating because one acts this way and one reacts that way and they keep building on it until we're seeing the world explode into all these little wars all over the world. So there's got to be a better way. <laughs> there's got to be a more excellent way. And I'm asking us as a community to step up and be that better way. A better way in which you can realize that we are not victims to laws and that we can become the laws of spirit. 
And the law of spirit says that you are the center of your power and that you can make a choice today to have a moment of grace in which all of your karma is burned and you can be reborn in this moment and you can change your assignment for why you're on this planet and begin to commit yourself to the co-creative ministry of helping those who are ready to go to the next level of what it means to be human. Amen. This. So, Jesus brought in a new age in his day. That's what he represents, a new age. Moving us into the age of Pisces. That's the fish. The fish. Now, you that know about what an age is. An age is an eon of time and they last about 2100 years according to the zodiac. Each 12 for all the, and by the way, welcome to the winter equinox today. This is the 21st day, this is the first day of winter and we are in a wonderful place to be talking about this today because we are moving into a, a new place in the heavens and in the signs. That's why there were stars mentioned when Jesus was born. Something was happening with the alignment of stars. All these things were going on that was much deeper than just the Christmas story. Things that don't make sense. Doesn't make sense it would be shepherds out in December anyway. Uh, running around. <laughs> That's an odd time to be coming around. So now we're entering the end of another 2,000 to 21 years in which we have entered into the new age of Aquarius. The age of Aquarius. So the age of Aquarius is rather an interesting age. First, let me tell you a bit about December 25th, the date that we celebrate his birth not being his actual birthday, sometime in the 4th century after the Council of Nicaea, which was in 325 A.D. How many has heard of the Council of Nicaea? It's a very important thing that you know about because that's when your Christianity was set into place almost 400 years after Yeshua Jesus had walked this earth. Isn't that amazing? So a group of bishops came together and they were arguing over dogma, as usual, trying to figure out exactly which it was. Is Jesus born divine or did he become divine later? That was the big question that was going on. So they pulled everybody together at Nicaea to talk about this. And Emperor Constantine wanted to codify Christianity into a church with common beliefs uh, uh, through the official church of the Roman Empire. He permitted them to continue, uh, and they did for centuries. Uh, but finally, they came up with uh, a certain dogma that Jesus was born divine. Paul said, no, he didn't come divine until he was baptized. John the Baptist said, no, he didn't become divine until the Spirit came upon high and the dove came upon him. So I'm telling you, isn't it great to just not worry about all this dogma and doctrine? <laughs> It's so great that we have been so blessed to go beyond all of that and to understand it spiritually and energetically. So actually they came up with the idea of Christmas and all these kind of things based upon pagan teaching. Now I don't think personally there's anything with pagan. Pagans got a bad rap. Uh, with, if you mention the word pagan with any traditional Christian, it's about as bad as the word occult. Occult is not a bad word. They think when we're saying occult, we're saying a cult. Yeah, make sure that you're clear that there's a difference in the occult and a cult. We don't want to be a cult, but we want to be occult. That means the understanding of that which is hidden. That's all it means. That which is concealed, the deeper meaning of something. Of course, I'm occult and proud to be. Pagan was nothing 
but those who saw their spirituality in nature. They saw it in nature. That's all they were. They celebrated the moon, the sun, the cycles. Nothing wrong with that. As I said, Jesus is shown being born into with animals. With the animal natures of nature itself. He must have felt it was an important aspect of our spirituality. was also held in the natural aspects of life itself. So finally they come up with all these things that are celebrated today. Now I'm against that. Absolutely not. Not the way you all came in. We're all red, dressed in red. We got Christmas trees. You got family stuff coming up. We got good food coming up. Who would be against that? <laughs> I don't care when you do it. So I'm, I'm not trying to be a, an old Scrooge here and say that we should be doing these things, but I just feel that what's been given to us to understand the deeper things, that at this time of the year we should understand what this means to us inwardly what it means to us in the experience that consciousness is basically going through at this time. So, got another joke. <laughs> Getting too heavy. Three wise men arrived to visit the child laying in the manger. One of the wise men was exceptionally tall and bumped his head on the low doorway, and he entered in the stable, and he said, Jesus Christ, he explained. Joseph said, write that down, Mary, it's better than Dave. <laughs> See, you gotta, you gotta do jokes in this heavy stuff, you just, you gotta do it. So bottom line is what I'm saying to you today for us inwardly. We celebrate the fact that consciousness has entered into the human experience. A consciousness that connects us far above all the dogma and the doctrine. That we don't have to, don't have to spend our time like I did studying all this stuff. I had to do it coming from a literalist fundamental background. So young, I had to. Why I had to is because I thought, if I'm going to give my life to this, that was a big decision as a, as a teenager. If I'm going to give my whole life to do this, the rest of my life, I want to know some things. I don't want to just take it second-handed. So I started on a quest of studying these things. So I've done that for you. So I'm not asking you got to go to the library and get all the books out and check out the history, unless you're really interested. But I'm telling you, nobody really knows what went on in most cases. It's what we connect with. What does it mean to us in a way that makes us the best that we can be? Today I celebrate, yes, the idea of Jesus. One thing that I was very attracted to in A Course of Miracles is where Jesus is so wonderfully telling us, you don't have to even believe in me, just let me be an idea. I thought that was the most egoless statement I'd ever heard because in Christianity, it was all ego. It's all about a man who came to start a big religion that would be one of the biggest religions on the planet. I didn't ever see Jesus that way. I didn't see Jesus with an ego, but I saw him as that humble aspect of all of us to say, I'm here to show you who you are. It's not about just who I am, but it's who you are and that we will share together. I am not Jesus, I am not Yeshua, but we can all share in the Christ. We can all share together in the Christ. And the Christ has no beginning. Now here's what it says. Christ has no beginning, no mother, no father, no end of days, and is the order of Melchizedek of an endless life. That's out of Hebrews. Say it again. You can't say that about Jesus. Jesus had a beginning. Jesus had an end of days here. He had a mother and he had a father. He had all these things, but it's Christ that had no beginning and had no end. So Christ was not born. Yeshua, Jesus was born, who knew that he was the Christ, the first, and said, now I will open up new portals for those who want to come and be with me and share in this embodiment of the Christ upon the earth. Today, let us embody the Christ consciousness. 
I love that term, Christ consciousness. It's not his last name. <laughs> Christ was with them. The Israelites, when they were in the wilderness, it was the rock that gave them water. Christ was long after Jesus. When Paul says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Today, we celebrate and we connect in the Christ. So, here we are, 21 years, moving out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. Now, Pisces is water, but Aquarius is the man with a pitcher pouring the water. That means to me, and I take the old prophecy, for there shall come a time the Spirit shall be poured out upon all flesh. Now, it takes a while to get into an age, people. It takes years because they overlap. That's why you see the strength of the old Aquarian age still around. Of the Pisces age still around. At the same time, you have this mixture of the Aquarian age. So when you go out there, a lot of you, Christmas Day with your family, you're going you're to see that you're of a different age than they are. A different consciousness they are. Probably you can keep your mouth shut, a lot of you. And if you want to have a good Christmas. You know what I'm saying? You go out there every day and, and you run into people that have this consciousness and you have people that are very starch in the old way. So we have to work through this time of the overlap in which the two are working. And that's one thing that I do love about this community that I see it working in both. I see it also working with the new age that is coming in. But it hadn't stabilized nor normalized itself quite yet. But we are the first ones of it. And I say that with all humility and with no ego whatsoever. But I do want to welcome you to the age of Aquarius. We've been hearing about it for years and years and years. But truly, those who walk in Christ consciousness are of that age of Aquarius. Um, we're going to do offering. Now, I, why I'm saying it that way is because I don't want a difference between anything else in the offering. The offering is a part of service. It's a part of giving. So I, I, I you know, I'm not going to, I just want you to be conscious. You've been doing so good. We are so proud of how this church has stepped up in the last year or so. It's amazing. Thank you so much for it. But I know at this time of the year, I know with Soma Energetics, my company, everybody kind of suffers because it's hard to compete with Santa Claus. <laughs> so I want you to put your spirituality first today and give a good loving offering to this community because things go on here and there's plans for great things to happen here very, very soon we believe you're going to be very happy about. It's going to make this uh, a new uh, Aquarian <laughs> Unity Church. When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter Let the 
sun shining, the sun shining. Let the sun shine. All right. Let the sun shine. Oh, let it in. The sun shine. Open your hearts and let the sun shine. I turn it to Nancy. Uh, you can have a seat. Robert has a real quick poem. It was really good. He brought it to me just before the service, and I thought this is really a good, a good work. Thank so you. bless us with it, Robert. A gift for you, <clears throat> by Robert Eden Sokol and Juanita L. Coston. This tribute to love is here just for you, but there's no room in the inn. We traveled far and wide. We traveled with purpose, but there was no room in the inn except in the animal's bin. Hearts and minds traveled far, and there we find the star of wonder and bright. This star of love and the king of kings was here, but there was no room in the inn except in the animal's bin. He came anyway with loving gifts and miracles for you, me, and life. Here he found room with a light within our hearts, it is here, so dear and clear. This gem can be found any place you look. So here it is, the joy of life through the strife of life's missteps forgiven. Our Lord found this room within our souls where asking for forgiveness allows transformation through the meekness of a fragile child, where vulnerability for love can only be the gift of spirit and life. Opportunities for forgiveness for our sins and gratitude brought to life, joy. Joy to the world of children, the root of survival of our human race. The power of giving of yourself has no ceiling of grandeur kept by our creators. Joy, joy, joy to you and me. Join us in this song, amen. You all are familiar with it. Want to put your hands together? That would help us out, help yourself out. Lead a bit. Amen. 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 You see the little baby. begun with me. Now there is peace on earth, the 
the peace that was meant to be with God as Creator. He all are we. Now we walk with each other in perfect harmony. Peace has begun with me, and this is the moment now. With every step I take, now this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Now there is peace on earth, and it has begun. going forth to be the ones that work for peace on earth. Our prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we 